Hello. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to package a Node-RED application into a container. But before we start, let's go through the pre prerequisites, which follow on from the previous tutorial. So you need to have an up-to-date version of Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. You need to have Docker version 19.3 or higher. You need to have an active Docker ID, as we're going to be creating and publishing a container to Docker Hub. And you need to have a GitHub account with the Git tooling installed on your system. You also need to have completed the previous tutorial, integrating source control with Node-RED, as the instructions in this tutorial expect you to have the template project forked into your GitHub account and cloned as a Node-RED project. So moving on to step one, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a container to package up a Node-RED application. So containers are increasingly becoming the standard way to package and distribute and then deploy an application on a cloud. But increasingly, we're seeing workloads in edge of network scenarios also beginning to use containers. On the cloud, the x86-64 is a predominant CPU architecture in use today. But there are also other systems such as Open Power and System 390 on the mainframe. And they're often used in large enterprise businesses. And at the edge, we have ARM32 and ARM64 as common systems. So in this tutorial, we're going to build a multi-architecture container to allow our Node-RED application to be to be deployed on multiple architectures. So as we saw in the previous tutorial, Node.js dependencies are captured in the package.json file. So when you're adding additional nodes to the Node-RED palette, you need to ensure that they're also added to the package.json file. And you can do that on the command line or from within the Node-RED editor. However, you're still gonna find there are some hidden dependencies that can creep into a project. Sometimes a Node.js package will have native dependencies and require operating system packages to be installed to get the Node.js package to run. So to get around this, we want to capture all of those dependencies and using Docker and a Docker file enables you to capture all of the hidden dependencies. If you go look at the starter project file, the provided Docker file has all the configuration to build your Node-RED application. It uses two stages. The first one has all the builds and compile tools installed in the container, and that would build the packages, including any native dependencies within a Node.js package. And then finally, we copy that into a production container where we don't have the build tools. So have a look at the Docker file to understand how that works. The other thing the starter project does is it modifies the Node-RED runtime to allow it to be better managed within the cloud. You'll see that there is an extra package being added to provide live, ready, and health status to a cloud environment. And this editor has also been moved to the admin endpoint. So in the settings.js file, we've changed the location of the Node-RED editor. In a production system, you would normally disable the editor because you don't want people being able to change a Node-RED application in a production container. But for this tutorial, so you can go and have a look at the flow, I've enabled the editor, but moved it to the admin endpoint. And finally, just be aware that this tutorial, we're gonna use the new BuildX Docker feature to make it easy to push multi-architecture containers. So moving on to step two, first of all, ensure that Node-RED is running. So we can use the docker ps-a command to see what containers are defined and what state they're in. If you have your my Node-RED container running, then you're good to go. If the container exists but is not in the upstate, then you can use the docker start to start the container. Otherwise, you may need to go create it using the docker run command as shown in the instructions. Once Node-RED is running, we're going to import a small flow which adds a new web endpoint. So go to your main menu using the button next to the deploy button 
and then select import. That'll bring up the import panel where you can copy and paste from the, the instructions, the flow sample. Then hit import. Once you've got the flow in the editor, commit and push the changes to Git as you did in the previous tutorial. So switch to the Git side panel, stage the change to flow.json, commit the change, and then in the commit history section, you can push the change up to the remote master branch. Moving into step three, to use the BuildX feature in Docker, you need to enable it. It's currently an experimental feature. So on Linux, you need to go and set a new environment variable. You can either do this on the command line or you can go and change your configuration file that your shell sources when you open a new login shell. So for me, that is .profile. And once you've done that, you need to enable multi-architecture within your Linux kernel. So you can run this doc command and that will do all the work necessary to add the additional um, multi-architecture features to your Linux workstation. On Mac OS and Windows, start Docker if it's not already running. And then just click the Docker icon in your operating system status area. And then select settings or preferences. Move to the command line section and then enable the experimental features. Once you've done that, navigate to the project directory. So this is in your home directory, then in the NR data directory, then project, and then the node red docker subdirectory. And that's where your Docker file lives. So you need to be in the directory that your Docker file lives. And then before we can build the container, you need to create a new builder. So use the docker buildx create command to create a new builder. And then the next command, we just inspect the builder, but the bootstrap option will also start the builder if it's not running. So you need to have the builder created and started before you can actually use it. You can check the state of the builder by using the docker build x ls command, and that'll show you whether the builder exists and it's running, but it'll also list the output of supported architectures that this builder can actually build. Before we actually do the build, make sure you're logged into Docker using the Docker login command. And this is going to be your Docker ID that you need to enter here. So enter the ID and password for your Docker account. Once you've done this, your operating system may remember this, so you don't need to enter it in future. And then finally, we're going to run the build x build command. And this will both build the containers and you can see I've listed a number of architectures here. Feel free to add or remove architectures that you need. But just remember, the more architectures you add, the longer the build takes. And this will also then push the built containers into Docker Hub. So this one command both builds and pushes the multi-architecture container into Docker Hub. It takes care of all the work of making the multi-architecture manifest. So it's much easier than using the existing, the traditional build process. Once you've built and pushed your container, you can use the buildx image tools inspect command to actually go look at it and see the details. And then to run it, you first need to stop your existing node red. So we're going to use the same port, 1880. So you can't have two containers listen to the same port. So stop your existing Docker container and then start the new container. And then you'll be able to test the container. So the first thing you'll notice is that the editor no longer exists at the default um, root location. To get the editor, you have to then add the slash admin. And then you can also test that you can get to the hello endpoint. And just a, a note here that not all browsers can display JSON. So that returns a JSON 
um, response to your browser may ask you to install a plugin to be able to see the JSON it returns. If you did build the ARM or ARM64 um, containers, then you can test it out if you have the appropriate hardware. <laughs>